G'day, how you going? So today I'm going to talk about ISO. So with ISO, basically all it's all it is is it, it lets you shoot uh, in dark situations when there's not enough light. So what it's doing is the ISO. When you increase the ISO, it's making the sensor more sensitive to whatever light is coming into the camera. So if there's not much light coming in, what you can do is you pump up the ISO to a higher number and that will make the sensor more sensitive to that light coming in and, and that'll make it as if there's more light in the photo, kind of artificially, because it's made the sensor more sensitive to that light and it'll let you get that shot. Now the problem with that is that when, when you pump up the ISO really high, it introduces a lot of graininess to the photo. Sometimes that might be all right if you like doing black and white and you want to get artistic like and you get, you know, you've ever seen those black and white photos that, you know, they're like really grainy and, you know, the guy, you can like porous on his face and stuff. But generally you want to get it, the ISO around 200, 300, 400. Anything under 1600 is, is a good ISO to, main, to, get, to, to make it so it's not too grainy when you're in the photo. Now generally I just shoot it in ISO auto, I mean it seems to be alright. Um, there hasn't been many times where I've wanted to change it. Mainly, main, sometimes maybe when I want to like shoot at night, um, the moon or some particular scenario where you need to. But in general ISO auto is just is, is easy and it works. There is one thing with ISO auto is that out of the camera factory default it'll only go up to 1600 ISO so there's a setting in there which I'll show you to increase that uh, ceiling so when you take a photo um, it's not going to stop at 1600 um, it'll uh, keep on going so you can get the, the shot uh, the main way to get into the ISO is to just go into the super control panel and then in here you can change it uh, auto low and then 200 and then the highest you can get is 25 600 now in the menu system you can get into it by the con custom menu and it's under exposure iso so in here uh, iso that's just another way of getting to it the step all that means is you can step up in thirds or you can step a full step in in so i'll show you if in at the moment it's in one third so it's got 200 250 320 400 it's going up in thirds if you change it to once one full stop you'll see that it's going up in one full stop two four eight sixteen thirty two sixty four see it doubles so that's one full stop of light this one here iso auto that just says where do you where do you want the iso auto to um, function in the program aperture and shutter or in all which will mean it'll also work in the manual and the main one in here that you really need to look at is the ISO auto set. So what this is, is this sets a ceiling. Like what I said before, the out of factory default, the camera highest limit of ISO is 1600. Say you're at uh, f1.8 and you want to photograph something, the ISO is 800. Now say you want to make, um, say that the less light comes in, uh, for instance, all right, say, um, let's pretend that there's less light coming in. So naturally, the camera will start um, adjusting the ISO or the shutter speed to accommodate. So, but you see how it's stopped at uh, 1600, and then now the shutter speed is changing. So what's happened there is because of this, this thing here, ISO auto set. You're telling it, don't go over 1600 ISO because you might not want to introduce too much graininess to the film or you're actually imposing that high ceiling limit intentionally so, you know, your, your photos don't turn out um, crap. So what you, um, you can do, though, is you can increase that to the highest 25600 or whatever you want, really. So, 
Um, normally, I think a lot of people just put 6,400, I've seen. Your, your graininess won't be that bad, even at 6,400. Okay, so here's an example of, I've set the ISO to 200. Now, the problem with this shot here is it's going to take two seconds for me to take the photo because the lens can only stop down to 3.5. So I increased it to ISO 3200 and that took it to one tenth of a second and that was easier to take the shot. Okay, in this scenario here, I want to get the flower and the tree in the background in focus, so I really wanted to increase the aperture, but it's pretty dark out here, so I don't have a flash, so I'm going to have to increase the ISO. Now, because I'm on ISO Auto, at factory default, it's only going to go to 1600, but I'm at F8 and it's saying four seconds i'm relying on the iso auto to pump it up but it's it's only it's capping at 1600 so what i need to do is two things i can just change the iso manually and get out of iso auto mode altogether or i can in increase the ceiling cap that four seconds i'm there's no way i'm going to take that photo so I went to 25600 ISO, which is the highest you can go, and that reduced it down to one quarter of a second. That was at F8. So another reason why you want to raise the ISO to a higher level is when you're in shutter priority mode. So if you want to freeze the action, then there's not enough light, it's too dark then it's not going to happen because your ice, your shutter speed is going to have to be lower and you just won't be able to freeze it. So you have to raise the ISO. I've set it to 1000 which will be enough to stop Jerry. But the ISO, it's on auto and it only goes up to 1600. I'll, I'll be able to freeze the action but it'll just be too dark. Jerry. Hey, hey wait. Jerry. Ready? Go get him. So now I've raised the limit of the ISO to like 25600. You ready? One more time. Wait. It might be grainy, but at least I've frozen the motion. Anyway, that's uh, it. It's a short one. So I'll see you next video and I'll, uh, I'll get into the color balance. That's the next bit of the manual is something that's all about the color. Uh, the white balance, sorry, the, not the color balance, the white balance, and we'll talk about that.